Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries in John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This is going to be part two of study or deception, which is uh, going to be part of a series. So let's take a look at something. In the book of Hebrews, chapter 9, And verse 27, And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. See, once you die, there is no second chance, as some would like to lead us to believe. Verse 28, so Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. All right, let's take a look at the book of Daniel, chapter 12, verse 1. Now, a lot of people don't know it, but this is very much a companion verse, well, chapter to uh, the book of Revelation and Matthew 24, Mark 13, and I think Luke, Luke 21, if I remember correctly. Verse 1, And at that time shall Michael stand up. And uh, you know what? The Jehovah's Witnesses want you well they want their 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 flock to believe that jesus is michael the archangel well my bible says that jesus created everything so if jesus created the angels and the earth i don't know how he could be an angel that he created but what can I tell you? And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered, every one that, is, that shall be found written in the book. What book? Well, the book of Revelation calls it the Lamb's Book of Life. Verse 2. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth. Now they're talking about their bodies here. You know, there's a lot of people that believe in soul sleep. Well, I don't believe in soul sleep, and we'll probably get to that later, but... Uh, when uh, Jesus talked about the rich man and Lazarus, the rich man was asking uh, Abraham to send Lazarus to, when he was dead, uh, when they were both, their bodies were dead, to have Lazarus come and tip the tip of, uh, dip the tip of his finger in water and put it on his tongue to cool his tongue because he was being tormented in the flame. And then when you read in Revelation, it talks about the dead saints under the altar who were killed for the testimony of Jesus. And they were crying with a loud voice saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, wilt thou avenge us of those that dwell on the earth? And I'm paraphrasing there, really bad, I'm sure. But they were crying out for vengeance for those that had killed them. And I'm sorry, but unless they were, you know, well, I guess, <laughs> I guess all people in soul sleep could say, well, you know, they were talking in their sleep, right? Only your body sleeps in the earth. 
And, you know, that's a euphemism for being dead. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Did you read that in verse 2? And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Uh, everlasting. That means it's a long, 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 long time. As in forever. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end. Ah. And many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. What kind of knowledge is going to be increased? Godly knowledge? Or secular, ungodly knowledge? Well, look at the last 200 years. You know, people were running around on camels and horses, and then they invented trains, and then they invented cars and airplanes and then jets. I mean, in the last 200 years, knowledge has exploded. I mean, if you took somebody from 200 years ago and showed them today, they'd be like, whoa, cell phones and television and radio and, you know, airplanes. I mean, they would just be absolutely shocked. In the last 200 years, knowledge has exploded. But it's not godly knowledge. All right, let's go to Amos, the book of Amos, A-M-O-S, chapter 8. And uh, Amos is considered what is called a minor prophet uh, because of the size, not importance, of the message, but rather the size, uh, as opposed to, you know, Jeremiah and Isaiah, which are large books. They consider them the major prophets. But let's take a look at Amos chapter 8, verse 1. Thus hath the Lord God showed unto me, and behold, a basket of summer fruit. And he said, Amos, what seest thou? And I said, a basket of summer fruit. Then said the Lord unto me, the end is come upon my people of Israel. I will not again pass by them any more. And the songs of the temple shall be howlings, howlings in that day. Ow! Well, not exactly a wolf howl, but they're going to be howling because of all the bad stuff. They're not going to be laughing in joy, that's for sure. And the songs of the temple shall be howlings in that day, saith the Lord God. There shall be many dead bodies in every place. They shall cast them forth with silence. Hear ye, I'm sorry, hear this, O ye that swallow up the needy, even to make the poor of the land to fail. You see, the uh, rich were oppressing the poor even back then. One thing I've noticed about rich people, they can never have enough. Generally. I won't say that about all rich people, perhaps, but that seems to be a general trait. They can never have enough. Verse 5. Now, this is talking about the rich. Saying... When will the new moon be gone that we may sell corn and the Sabbath that we may set forth wheat, making the ephah small? Now, an ephah was a measurement of 
grain, okay? So it was supposed to be a, a certain amount of grain, but they were going to make it small. They were going to cheat them on the amount of grain that they were going to sell them, making the ephah small and the shekel great. Uh, what's a shekel? It was a coin. So how do you make a coin great? Well, a shekel was actually a measurement of weight. Ah, did you know that a dollar is a measurement of weight of silver? The definition of a dollar, a U.S. dollar, was one ounce of 90% pure silver. One ounce of 90% pure silver. Look in your wallet and you got green pieces of, uh, well, cloth paper that they pass off as money. That's not a dollar. It's a piece of paper that says a dollar. It's got pictures of presidents on it. That is not a dollar. We haven't had dollars since 1964. How about you Brits? Do you know what a pound is? Really, do you know what a pound is? You ever heard the expression, a pound sterling? It was supposed to be a pound of sterling silver. Now you got a piece of paper with a picture of a queen on it. It says pound or pounds. Yeah, it was supposed to be a, measure, a weight. And now it's virtually worthless and that's what they've done to us so they want to make the ephah the measurement of the grain small they want to make the shekel great and falsifying the balances by deceit what do you mean balances well they didn't have digital scales back then so they would have a balance scale and uh they would make the scales so that you had to put extra uh, money on there. They were cheating you. They were they were sell the the amount of grain they were shorting you on, and then the the money they were overcharging you on, and then they were making the balances wrong so that you overpaid. I mean, you were getting. The, I guess you could basically say you were getting the shaft three ways, right? Verse 6. That we may buy the poor for silver and the needy for a pair of shoes, yea, and sell the refuse of the wheat. Refuse, uh, as in the garbage. Uh, you know, refuse, refuse. Yeah, the stuff that was, uh, maybe it was moldy or whatever. The stuff that they didn't want. That's what they're selling you. I don't know. Verse 7. The Lord hath sworn by the excellency of Jacob. Surely I will never forget any of their works. You see, God's got a better memory than any computer. And he's not going to forget. Not one thing. That's what's scary, people. Verse 8. Shall not the land trouble for the tremble for this, and every one mourn that dwelleth therein? And it shall rise up wholly as a flood, and it shall be cast out and drowned as by the flood of Egypt. Uh, I think it's going to be a flood of enemy armies. That's what I think it's referring to here. Not so much a, a flood of water, but it's likening uh, the flood of Egypt. You know, every year the, the Nile River would flood. And then they would dig canals and utilize that water for their crops, for their fields. Verse 9. And it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord God, that I will cause the sun to go down at noon, and I will darken the earth in the clear day. Now, this could be literal, or it could be 
spiritual. And I will turn your feasts into mourning. Now, that's not talking about early in the day. Mourning as in like a funeral, right? And all your songs into lamentation. So instead of singing happy songs, they're going to be singing bad, unhappy songs, right? And I will bring up sackcloth upon all loins and baldness upon every head. And I will make it as the morning of an only son and the end thereof as a bitter day. See, when people were uh, in repentance, they used to take off their comfortable clothing and put on sackcloth, which was very uncomfortable clothing. And they would shave their heads. But we don't have that today. Uh-uh. No. There's no wickedness too evil for uh, the Western world today. No. Verse 11. Here's the important part. Pay attention. Behold. Now keep this in mind with Daniel. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will send a famine in the land. A famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst of water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. You know what? We are just about there, if you ask me. And they've got laws on the books now. They can take the New Testament and make it illegal. Every word, word of Christ, illegal. Yeah. All over the world. It's getting to the point. You can turn on the television, the radio, and not, and with all the stations, not even hear the Word of God. And if you think you're hearing the Word of God on TBN or the 700 Club or CBN, well, that's up to you. Uh, may I suggest you turn that off and uh, start reading the Bible, and maybe you'll find out that they have lied to you. See, I, uh, I know one day I'm going to have to give an account of every word that I've ever said and uh, everything I've ever taught. And like I say, I never wanted to be a teacher. I never wanted this job. It pays terrible. I mean, you know, I'm a volunteer. You know, nobody sends me money. You know? Well, I mean, a few of you have sent me money, and I'm not doing this for money. And those of you that have sent me money, thank you. But I'm just saying, you know, nobody's paying me to do this. To do this. So... You know, like I say, I'm a volunteer. Uh, and you get what you pay for in this world, right? So, no complaining. So, there's going to be a famine in the land. Not a famine of bread or thirst of water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. Of course, when the tribulation comes, there will be a famine in the land. And that'll be both kinds of bread. The bread of life and the bread of the body. Verse 12. And they shall wander from sea to sea and from the north even to the east. And they shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord and shall not find it. In that day shall the fair virgins and young men faint for thirst. They that swear by the sin of Samaria and say, Thy God, O Dan, liveth, and the manner of Beersheba liveth, even they shall fall and never rise up again. Uh, those of you who don't know it, Dan was one of the tribes of Israel and went into apostasy. I believe they were one of the first, if not the first, to fall into apostasy. 
All right, let's go to Revelation chapter 6 real quick. I want to prove to you that uh, soul sleep is unbiblical and that um, there's going to be two famines in the land. One of the Word of God and the other of bread. Revelation 6 and verse 1. And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals and heard, as it were, the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, Come and see. And there went out another horse that was red. Red. Uh, what is the significance of red? Well, what color is blood? Uh, what color are the flags of communism? Red. Revelation 12, what color is the dragon? The devil and Satan. Uh, red, a red dragon. You know, there's a reason for... Uh, this is why I tell you, stick with the King James Bible. It explains itself a lot of times within the context of the verse. And oftentimes in the first mention of a word or phrase. Very important. And of course, you could always read James chapter 1 and ask for, uh, for understanding. And I've heard so many people say, Oh, I, I try reading the Bible, but I just don't understand it. Well, why didn't you ask in prayer for understanding? You know? I mean, you spend 27,000 hours watching television in a lifetime, probably even more than that. I don't know. I mean, people that don't bother reading the Bible and spend 20 or 30,000 hours watching television, and if they commit the unpardonable sin or take the mark of the beast, you think God's going to pardon them? But Lord, I, I went to Benny Hinn's church and gave money every month. You know, praise the Lord. Uh, you, you really think he's going to say, well, you know... You can't help it. You you didn't know. You know, you, you took the mark of the beast, but you just didn't know. So I'm going to forgive you. I, I just don't think I'm going to be hearing those words. Uh, I just don't think so. Verse 4. Revelation 6 and verse 4. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth. Yeah, take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. When he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see, and I beheld, and lo, a black horse. And he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny. And three measures of barley for a penny. And see thou not hurt the oil and the wine. Now, back in these days, a penny was the day's wage for an unskilled laborer. So a measure of wheat for a penny and three measures of barley for a penny... Uh, that's basically a loaf of bread for a day's wage. And when you got war, people are too busy fighting to plant and harvest crops. And crops get damaged in war. And then when you don't eat, guess what? What follows famine? Disease, because your body can't fight off sickness and illness, right? And then you have 
basically a loaf of bread for a day's wage. Verse 7. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was Death, and hell followed with him. Death and hell. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with the sword, and with hunger, and with death, and with the beasts of the earth. This is telling you right here, uh, one quarter, one fourth of the earth, 25% of the earth is going to die from war, hunger, and the beasts of the earth. Are these four-legged or two-legged beasts? Paul said he fought with wild beasts at Ephesus. I'll guarantee you he wasn't fighting lions and tigers and bears. Verse 9. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw... Uh, oh, here we go. Listen to this, people. Here we go. Here's the punchline. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar... Under the altar, the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? So these souls were slain for the word of God, for the testimony which they held, and they cried with a loud voice, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? When somebody tells you soul sleep, wrong. Well, Bob, that's just a figure of speech. That's just a metaphor. I mean, really? But we're going to get back to that. Verse 11. And white robes were given to every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. Read this carefully, people. Um, if the pre-trib rapture is true... Why are these people having to wait for their resurrected bodies? Uh, uh, I don't know, Chaplain Bob. You're confusing me. Well, good. No, no, no. You got it wrong. If you believed in the pre-trib rapture, you were already confused. I'm just helping you understand and realize that you're confused. No. No. After the last saint, the last martyr of the Lord dies, that's when the resurrection of the just happens. Period. You know, pre-trib rapture people think everybody's going to be up in heaven and then everybody else is getting slaughtered here on the earth, including people that come to Christ. While they're up there having the marriage slapper of the Lamb... Uh, the guy that's being martyred for his faith in Christ, he's going to miss the marriage supper of the Lamb. I just don't get it. Well, yeah, I actually do, but it's from the devil. Duh. Verse 12. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal... And lo, there was a great earthquake. And by the way, today is uh, December 29, 2020. There was a uh, earthquake in Croatia, which is part of, uh, I think it's southeastern Europe. Um, I've heard it was a six. Some people say it was more than a six. I don't know. I heard some, one person told me it was a nine. 
I'm telling you, if they had a nine earthquake on the Richter scale, that's total and complete, almost total and complete, utter devastation. I mean, that's when almost everything breaks and just collapses. You know, bridges, uh, buildings, high rises, everything. I mean, that's like, that's bad, people. That is, a, a nine is nasty. Even a six isn't even good. But, I don't know. And lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. And the stars of heaven fell unto the earth. Um, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind. Now, I've heard people say, well, you know, these stars are the fallen angels. Other people say that these are actual stars. I don't know. Take your pick. Verse 14, And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. Boy, that is one heck of an earthquake, isn't it? All the mountains and islands moved out of their places. Verse 15, And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains and said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath has come, and who shall be able to stand? That's right, rich people. Get comfortable in your uh, underground bunkers. And uh, see if it does you any good in the day of the Lamb's wrath. It ain't going to do you any good, you evildoers. You wanted to hurt and deceive the Lord's sheep? Well, wait till the shepherd comes and drives a stake into the heart of those wolves. Well, not a stake, but a sword. Oh, yeah. Now, in part one, the uh, re I read where the Bible records that deception would be very, very prevalent in the final days. And when we read Amos, we said that there would be a famine of hearing the words of the Lord in the latter days or end times. And that's what it's getting to be like. So what is the only way that you can keep from being deceived? Well, that's by studying to show thyself approved unto God. And if you don't read, and if you don't study, uh, <laughs> you know, Satan's going to deceive you. And you got a choice. All right, let's go to the beginning. Genesis chapter 1. Uh, do you know that Genesis is the same root word as where they get the word generator or generate? You know, what does a generator do? Uh, makes electricity, right? Uh, what is the first four letters of Genesis? G-E-N-E, -E, gene. As in DNA, right? Uh, create. Uh, there's a lot of things here I'm going to try to bring to light. I'm not sure I'll do a good job of it, but uh, I'm going to give it a shot. In Genesis 1.1, it says, In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. So there was a beginning. And that doesn't mean that God had a beginning. It means that the heaven and the earth had a beginning. you got to realize something. The Bible is the history book of 
Adam and his Redeemer, which is Christ. So when it says in the beginning, the earth had a beginning. Now, when you read Genesis 1 and 2, there is nowhere in here where it says that God created the angels on any specific day. But when you read Job 38, it said that the angels, uh, the sons of God, the, the stars, shouted for joy at the foundation of the earth. Well, there's only one logical conclusion. They had to have existed prior to the creation of the earth. But we'll go more into that a little later. Um, and we're going to take a look at Job chapter 1 also, where Satan comes along and says, uh, wants to make a bet with God about Job. Poor Job. But Job had some bad things happen, but he was restored at the end. So when you read Genesis 1, you know, God creates the heavens, he creates the earth, uh, fruit trees, the grass, you know, the lights in the sky, and uh, the waters and the fish, all the creeping things. So let's read. Genesis 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female, created he them. Now some people will tell you that there were uh, pre-Adamite people on the earth. I don't know if I believe that. Um, sometimes the Bible doesn't give you enough information to know either way. But here, my opinion is, I believe that these God created the souls of every man and woman that would ever live. That's my guess. Verse 28. And God blessed them and said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Ah, okay. Verse 29, And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for meat. Uh, meat used to just mean food or eating. I mean, look at the word eat and then put an M in front of it and you got meat. Uh, of course, today, uh, modern usage in English, it means uh, animal protein. You know, like a steak. But, uh, and the 400 years ago, that wasn't exactly what it meant. And to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to every thing that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for meat, and it was so. Now, I believe at this point, everything was vegetarian. That is my guess. Verse 31. And God saw everything that he had made. Behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. And behold, it was very good. Ah, okay. Now, I believe that the angels, all of them, including what is now the devil and Satan, were, uh, I believe the angels were created prior to the earth. And we'll get to that in Job 38. And that they were good. God looked at everything he'd made, and it was good. It was all very good, right? So if God had created anything that had corrupted, it wouldn't have been good, right? It would have been bad. 
So I think up to this point in time, everything is good. Nothing bad yet. All right, let's go to verse 2. Or chapter 2, I should say. Thus the heaven and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. Uh, when you're talking about the host of heaven, um, usually it seems from my understanding that they're talking about the angels. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had made. Now, was God tired and had to take a rest? No. Lord does things as an example for us. Christ was our example. Believe it or not, he was. An example of what we should be like. All right. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had made. Verse 3. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified because that in it he had rested from all his work, which God created and made. Okay. All right. Let's skip to verse 7. Genesis 2 and verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. All right. A body, right? And breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. Now, I believe that uh, people's souls existed. But here it is. He's forming a body for them. And then implanting the soul and breathing into him the breath of life. And when you look at that word breathed, whether it is the um, Hebrew or the Greek, it has reference to spirit. Yeah. So here it is. God forms a body implants a soul and uh, gives them the spirit of life and man became a living soul all right let's go to verse 8 and lord god planted a garden eastward in eden and there he put the man whom he had formed uh when we read that the lord created the souls of you know male and female I believe that before we were born, we existed in some type of form. We had to have existed prior. We had to have existed in some way, shape, or form. Uh, it just makes sense. We'll go more into that in a minute. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed and out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food, the tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Now, I got an entire playlist on trees. Uh, I believe it's Ezekiel 31 there where it talks about, or is it 28? I forget, but it's, it, talks about uh, trees and sometimes uh, we're talking about family trees all right uh, it's just but here you got the tree of the knowledge of good and evil now I believe somewhere between Genesis 1 and Genesis 2 Satan fell Satan tried to uh, overthrow God, and that's recorded in a few places. We're gonna we're gonna get to that matter. Eh, maybe I should do it now. But I believe up to Genesis one, before the Lord formed man of the earth, 
Well, by day six of the earth, that everything was good. But sometime between the sixth day and the seventh day, or sometime, either the seventh day or after, Satan fell, tried to kill God in a war in heaven. There is a thing in the book of Adam and Eve, and that's what they call the pseudopigrapha. I'm not saying this is true. I'm just throwing this out there for you to consider. In the book of Adam and Eve, it talks about Adam asked the devil, why are you making so many problems for us? Why are, you know, what's up with this? We never did anything to you. I'm paraphrasing. And uh, the devil says, basically, it's because of you that I fell from my position in heaven. And I mean, it's been over 20 years since I've read this stuff. So, you know, I'm just going by my memory. And, you know, I'm old and, you know, probably get on, going senile. But um, basically, the Lord had asked Satan or Lucifer or whatever, the devil, future devil, to uh, be a servant to Adam and Eve. And the devil said, no way. They, they are, um, I'm a, a higher level being than them. In other words, I'm, you know, you're talking about one of the most powerful, probably one of the most powerful angels in heaven. And the Lord asked them, Satan, to, to serve Adam and Eve, who were made in God's image. And Satan probably said, no way, dude, they should be serving me because I'm a more powerful being than them. I mean, you're talking flesh and blood as opposed to, you know, an angel. And then he, uh, somewhere along the line, I guess Satan decided to rebel. Now, I'm not saying that's true, but you know what? To me, it makes sense. And another thing, too, is I personally believe that the Lord had given Satan a temporary charge over the earth to be its, um, I wouldn't say ruler, but to, I don't know, be the guide. Well, maybe to be the earth's ruler for a certain period of time. I don't know. You know, he was supposed to be in charge of the earth for a certain period of time. And uh, I don't know. We'll cover, we'll go more into that in a little bit. So the souls of men and women were created. On the sixth day, the Lord declared everything was good. And then after this, on the seventh day or after... Uh, you got the tree of good and evil. So somewhere between the sixth, sometime after the sixth day, there was a falling. Boy, I hate to read Revelation 12 again. I've read this chapter so many times, but you know what? It's part of the study. So we're going to read it again. Boy, I must have read this chapter. It's an important chapter. It really is. Verse 1. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. Who's the woman? Israel, the bride of Christ. Who's the sun? Jacob. Who's the moon? Um, Rachel and Leah and the other concubines. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, Jacob. Yeah. Jacob Israel. And uh, the 12 tribes. All right. So a woman clothed with the sun 
and a moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. Well, if you read this dream of Joseph, you'll know the interpretation of this. And she, being with child, cried, travailing in birth, and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. Behold, a great red dragon. Oh, there's that red again. A great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. Now, if the stars were suns or, you know, S-U-Ns, or stars in heaven, you know, burning stars, and they were cast to the earth, the earth would be burned up, right? So this is a figure of speech for angels, and we're going to get to that in Job 38. So the dragon, his and his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, did cast them to the earth, and the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. Uh, didn't that happen in the garden? I mean, Cain tried to kill Abel, right? What about when Herod tried to kill Christ in uh, Bethlehem? But uh, Joseph and Mary had fled to Egypt. Verse 5. And she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And who's that? Uh, Christ. And her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. Christ. Verse 6. And the woman. This is Israel, the church. And the woman fled into the wilderness. Now, this is future, people. Probably not that far in the future. And the woman fled into the wilderness. Why? Why is the woman fleeing into the wilderness? Because cities are bad news. Cities are bad news, big dog. Ain't no other way around it. And the woman fled into the wilderness where she hath a place prepared of God that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. That's about 42 months approximately. Verse 7. Now I think this happened. Verse 7. I think this happened uh, either on the seventh day or after in Genesis. And there was, past tense, and there was war in heaven. No, it's not, and there will be. No, and there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought in his angels, and prevailed not, neither was her place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent. Ah, the old serpent. Think about that when you read Genesis chapter 3 about the serpent that's talking to Eve. Why would it say the old serpent? And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan. Which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Ah, okay. So this serpent, the dragon, the red dragon, deceives the whole world and was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Okay. So I think that's past and present. And now let's read future. And I heard a, a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accuses, accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony and they loved not their lives unto the death. Who didn't love their lives unto death? Those that overcame by the blood of the Lamb. 
with the word of their testimony. I mean, come on, people. But, but, Chaplain Bob, you got it all mixed up. Ah, what about the pre-trib rapture? Well, I can't find the pre-trib rapture. Sorry. And yes, people, they're uh, to escape the uh, mark of the beast and the persecution, the tribulation, the trouble. Uh, the church is going to have to go into the wilderness. That's just the way it is. Some of, some of us are going to have to die for the faith. Verse 12. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. And when the dragon saw that he was cast unto the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man-child. Oh, yeah. That's been going on for thousands of years. And the woman was given two wings of a great eagle. Uh, you know what, people? God says that he took Israel out of Egypt on eagles' wings. You know, all the interpretations of Revelation can usually be tied right back into the Old Testament. And the woman, the church, Israel, and the, to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness into her place where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time, uh, times a year and times, that's two years, so that's three years and half a time, so that's three and a half years. Well, guess what? Uh, that's 42 months, that 1260 days. Uh, and the woman were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness into her place where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. Ah, the flood of the dragon. And the earth helped the woman and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. And the dragon was wroth with the woman. He was angry and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. What commandments? The two commandments. Love the Lord and love thy neighbor. Jesus said on these two hang all the law and the prophets. And hopefully if you have a bunch of Satanists as uh, neighbors, well, that's why you're going to have to go into the wilderness because... Uh, they're not going to tolerate having Christians for uh, neighbors. Oh, yeah. Now, if you want to know why I believe that we existed in, uh, you know, soul uh, uh, form with the Lord uh, prior to our bodies being formed, and that would be found in Jeremiah chapter 1. Let's read verse 4. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Huh. Before the Lord had allowed him, uh, formed him in the belly, before he was even conceived, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Ah. You see, before, before he was even conceived in the womb, Jeremiah was ordained to be a prophet. Did we exist in some form prior to Satan rebelling? Did we choose which side we were going to be on before we were born? I don't know, but that to me seems very plausible. Uh, you know, did we exist and see the rebellion of the Lord, of, of Satan in heaven? Did we pick a side before we were even born? that we have no knowledge of? Did the Lord wipe our memories? I don't know. 
But I kind of suspect possibly that's true. Uh, maybe that's why the Lord says we were chosen in election before the foundation of the world. I, I don't know. Uh, how about Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4? According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. You know, when people complain about uh, uh, Calvinism, you know, and when they talk about Calvinism, they're talking about, you know, God having a uh, chosen people. Well, this is why, probably why Calvin believed in election. I mean, the Bible teaches election. You know, but they want you to believe that uh, the elect, God's chosen people, are those that reject the Messiah. Uh, how can that be? I can't figure, I can't figure that one out. According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. God chose his people before the foundation of the world. All right, let's take a look at Revelation 13, verse 1. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns. Remember in Revelation 6 where it talked about the dragon with the seven heads? Oh, yeah. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. Now, who's called the lion of the tribe of Judah? Christ. But this one, this beast has the mouth as the mouth of a lion. He's going to speak like he is Christ, the lion of the tribe of Judah. But he's not. He's a beast. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. Now, how in the world can the dragon give him his seat and great authority? You know, God had to have made some kind of a deal with the devil. Uh, it doesn't sound right, but bear me out here. I honestly think the Lord gave the devil the power over the earth for a certain period of time. I, I honestly do. Because why else is he here? Well, to, to test his, you know, God's children, of course. But uh, how can the dragon give this one great authority over the earth? Unless it was his to give. I don't know. We'll take a look at that later. And I saw one of his heads, as it were, wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. And they worshipped the dragon. Oh, yeah. You better believe it, baby. And they worshipped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth, speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. Three and a half years, people. 12, 24, 36, plus 6, 42. 1,260 days. The Bible tells you three different ways. There's going to be three and a half years of utter hell on this earth. That's why the woman is going to flee to the wilderness. 
Ain't going to be no pre-trib rapture, people. I wish I was wrong, but I'm not. I've studied the Bible way too much. That's why the devil planted this false prophecy, so that people, when they're still here, and it's either deny Jesus or die for Jesus, deny, D-E-N-Y, Jesus, or D-I-E, die for Jesus. Deny or die for Jesus. Deny Jesus or die. Yeah. And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints. Oh, yeah, Chaplain Bob, don't you know? That's not talking about the church. We're not the saints. That's those unbelievers over in the Middle East that uh, hang out in the Israeli state. Yeah, right, Bob. You just don't know, don't you? Yeah, you're right. I don't know. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. War with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations and all that dwell upon the earth, all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. If any man have an ear, let him hear. Do you know that there are people whose names are written in the book of life of the Lamb, slain from the foundation of the world? Do you know that Jesus was destined to be slain as the sinless Lamb from the foundation of the world before Satan even fell? If you read this the way I see it, before Satan even fell, before the tree of good and evil Jesus was destined as the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world. I mean, can you imagine this? God made provisions for his people before we even took a breath for the first time. I mean, to me, I don't know. It's just, it boggles my mind. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity, and he that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. So if you're supposed to go into captivity, go peacefully, if they want to take you for the word of God. And if you kill to prevent that, well, that's how you're going to be killed. Here is the patience and faith of the saints. And guess what, people? I guess we could keep reading. What do you think? And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. Oh, yeah. You ever see that kid's show, Train Your Dragon? Ah, nope. The dragon's training your kids. And he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them that dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed and he doeth great wonders miracles people and he doeth great wonders so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men this is what elijah did people a elijah did this elijah did this when he confronted the prophets of baal ball yep Elijah had fire come down from heaven at least three times. One, to take the sacrifice, and two times to devour the captain in their 50s when King Ahab tried to take him prisoner. 
Elijah said, If I be a man of God, let fire come down from the sky and devour thee and thy fifty. And it did. So there's going to be lying wonders, false miracles, fake miracles from the power of the devil. Oh, yeah. And he maketh great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. And what do you want to bet the false prophet calls himself Elijah? He's going to do the same type of miracles as Elijah. Verse 14. And deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth, that they should make an image to the beast, which had the wound by a sword, and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark, in their right hand or in their foreheads. And that no man might buy or sell, say that he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name, here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred three score and six. Six, six, six. Oh, yeah. Now, when you read Genesis 1 and 2, nowhere in the scriptures does it tell you what day the Lord created the angels. I believe they existed prior to the creation of the earth. I mean, when you read the Bible, angels exist, don't they? Yeah. But the Bible is not the book of the angels. Angels are mentioned, but the Bible isn't the book of the angels. The Bible is the book of Adam and their redemption by Christ, who's called the second Adam. So I guess you could say the Bible is the book of the two Adams, Adam of the flesh and the second Adam, the one from, one from the earth and the other from heaven. Job 38, verse 1. Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, who is this that darkeneth counsel by words without knowledge? Uh, I guess the modern translation of that would be, uh, uh, you're talking about something you don't know anything about. Verse 3. Gird up, now, gird up now thy loins like a man. In other words, put your pants on like a man. For I will demand of thee, and answer thou me. Where was thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? You know, where were you when I made the earth? Where were you? Declare, if thou hast understanding. Who hath laid the measures thereof, if thou knowest? Or who hath stretched the line upon it? Which is a construction term. Whereupon are the foundations thereof fastened? Or who laid the cornerstone thereof? Listen carefully. When the morning stars sang together, and all the sons of God shouted for joy. Now it's talking about the creation of the earth, and the morning stars are sang together, and all the sons of God shouted for joy. Who are the morning stars? Who are the sons of God? They got to be angels, because they existed prior to, to the foundation of the earth. When the earth's being created, they're shouting for joy. They sang and they shouted for joy. When you read Job, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Genesis 6, when it talks about the sons of God coming in under the daughters of men, and they had giants for children, and then God gets uh, angry and destroys the earth in the flood, what do you think he's talking about here? The fallen angels, people. The Fallen Angels, and I got an entire playlist on that, probably 6, 8, 10, 12 hours, where I prove that 
The sons of God are the angels. There's no other way around it. I'm sorry. Believers don't marry unbelievers and have giants for kids. Otherwise, King David was in the wrong when he killed Goliath. He should have preached the gospel to him. Oh, Goliath, Jesus loves you. Believe in Jesus. He loves you, Goliath. Meanwhile, Goliath takes out his sword and cuts off King David's head. Yeah. Yeah, that's the garbage that they preach in churches today. You know, God's a homicidal maniac, if you believe that kind of stuff. I don't think so. But, hey, that's just one person's opinion that's spent a little bit of time reading the Bible every now and then. So, the the sons of God and the morning stars, plural, has to be the angels. I mean, after all, they existed at the foundation of the earth, and they're not, nowhere in Genesis are they being said that they were created on any such a day. They existed prior. Angels exist. Nowhere in Genesis does it say the day that the angels were created. At least not the way I read it. All right, let's go to Job chapter 1. And we'll start in verse 6. Because I we've already gone well over an hour, and I haven't even hardly started yet. I hate breaking up Bible studies when I'm getting to important points. Because if you listen to part 1 and part 2, and then there's a part 3, and then you lose the continuity. So... Verse 6, now there was a day when the sons of God, the sons of God, remember Job 38, the sons of God, the morning stars, morning stars sang, the sons of God shouted for joy. They're angels, people. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. Now there's people who will tell you, oh, well, you see, Satan hasn't been cast out of heaven yet because he's still presenting himself before the Lord in heaven. But the Bible doesn't say that he's in heaven. Maybe the Lord's on the earth. I don't know. Of course, it doesn't say they're on the earth either. Uh, the Lord doesn't say he's on the earth or in heaven. All right, so let's keep reading. Now, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, when, Whence camest thou? So where are you coming from? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. Ah. So Satan says, ah, I'm, you know, hanging out. I've been walking around here on the earth, you know, checking this out, checking that out, you know. Here and there. So evidently, Satan's on the earth. You know, so honestly, that's my opinion. I think Satan was cast out of the earth in the past. And there's a lot of people that say that, uh, scholars, scholars, that say that Job was probably the oldest and first book of the Bible. I believe it. So, Verse 8, And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil? What does eschew mean? It means hates and stay away from. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear God for naught? Yeah, does uh, Job fear you for nothing? Hast thou not made an hedge about him? In other words, you've put a fence around him. You put a fence around him. I can't get to him. I made a Bible study on the hedge, too. I think a playlist. I'm not sure. Hast thou, has not thou made an hedge about him and about his house and about all that he hath on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands, and his substance is increased in the land. But put forth thine hand now and touch all that he hath, and he will curse thee to thy face. Ah. See, Satan uh, 
basically in medieval times it was like throwing down the gauntlet that's like a challenge oh yeah he loves you huh lord well you take everything away from him he'll curse you to your face i bet ya and god said oh i'll accept that bet oh i'm sorry that's the bob translation but put forth thine hand now and touch all that he hath, and he will curse thee to thy face. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in thy hand. I'm sorry, all that he hath is in thy power. Only upon himself put not forth thine hand. All right, so whatever you want to do to him, you can, but you can't kill him. Nope, you can do everything but. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. So, if you want to, you can keep reading this. A lot of bad things happened. Um, uh, a whirlwind comes and kills part his sons, and uh, fire comes down from the sky, and uh, a bunch of raiders come, and, uh, you know, like the Vikings, but I think they're Arabs, Sabians. Uh, they kill his servants and haul off with all his flocks and his herds. You know, a lot of bad stuff happens. But if the, the point is, fire comes down from the sky. Power is given unto Satan to bring down fire from the sky. He is has is been given power to mimic Elijah. Oh, yeah. And you can read about this in verse 16. And while he was yet speaking, there came another and said, The fire of God is fallen from heaven and hath burned up the sheep and the servants and consumed them. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. Oh, yeah. And then in verse 19, it talks about a great wind from the wilderness and smote the four corners of the house, and it fell upon the young men, and they are dead. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. So, not only could Satan conjure up the fire from the sky, he could also conjure up wind. What was this, a tornado? I wouldn't be surprised. So, what did, what did Job do? Verse 20. Then Job arose, rent his mantle, shaved his head, fell down upon the ground and worshipped, and said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And all this Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. Now, my opinion is the Lord made some kind of a bet like this when he was given charge of the earth. Uh, that's my opinion. Otherwise, why is he still hanging around? And you will find that uh, that is one of the charges that uh, Satanists make when they say that God is not more powerful than the devil because if God was more powerful than the devil, well, why is the devil still around? You know, that's their charge. Well, if God's so powerful, why is Satan so... Why is he still here? Why hasn't God destroyed him? Well, because uh, God is using Satan for his purpose. You know, God used Judas Iscariot for his purpose. Jesus said, Have I not chosen ye twelve, and one of ye is a devil? Oh, yeah. So my opinion is God is using the devil to test every single, each and every one of us. Will we follow the Lord? Will we follow the devil? Will you take the mark of the beast if it comes in our lifetime? Or will you neglect reading the Bible, studying the Bible, and then on judgment day say, but, 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 Lord, I, I didn't know. Well, why didn't you know? Uh, I was too busy watching television. I was 
watching the uh, Chicago Bears play the uh, whatever, you know, the St. Louis Rams or whatever. Or I was watching uh, the Miami Heat play the, the Nets. Or I was watching the Dodgers play the Yankees. Uh, girls, if you don't know, ask your brother, or boyfriend, or husband. We're talking about sports teams, you know. Really? You know, uh, what can I tell you? You know, if you take the mark of the beast, you got no excuse. None. You didn't even bother to read the Bible? Really? Do you know that people died to give us the Bible? And people won't even bother to read it? William Tyndale translated the in, uh, uh, entire New Testament. And from what I understand, he translated about half of the Old Testament when the, the, the church of Rome caught him. They used his own Bible to light a bundle of sticks under his feet on fire. And as he was burning alive, he said, Lord, open the eyes of the King of England. And a number of years later, the Lord did. And his name was James, the King of England and Scotland. Yeah. And in 1611, they came up with a Bible that bears his name. But he didn't call it the King James Bible. He called it the authorized version because it was authorized by the King of England. Yeah. You know, there was a time when the Catholic Church that had long been infiltrated by the devils, they tried to prevent the King James Bible from being printed. They sent the Spanish fleet to invade England. And Spain at the time was the ruling uh, rulers of the waves. England was a second rate, rate naval power at the time. And Spain had a huge army. And they put this huge army on their ships and set sail for England. And when they heard that this was coming, the royalty of England told the people and said, proclaim a fast and prayer that we be spared. Because they knew there was no way England could stand against Spain. Well, guess what? The Lord sent a wind and destroyed the Spanish fleet and the soldiers that were on. Matter of fact, they printed a coin. It said the, the Lord blew and the fleet was scattered. I would love to have one of those coins, but uh, I imagine they cost a fortune. Do you know people died to give us the Bible? And most today don't even consider it worth their time. You know, <laughs> Lord is not going to have any pity on those people whatsoever. Zero. I'm pretty positive. I mean, I could be wrong. The Lord is a merciful Lord, but uh, those that take the mark of the beast, and you'll know what it is. You won't be able to buy or sell without it. And I'm not one of these ones to say, well, it's the microchip or it's the, the Lucifer Ace uh, vaccine, because I don't know yet. We don't know yet, but we will if we are the end time generation. And I'm not saying we are, because I don't know. I'll be honest with you. I don't know. But it wouldn't surprise me if we are. So, all right, let's read Matthew. I believe that Satan was given a charge of the earth for a certain period of time. Let's read Matthew chapter 4. Jesus had been uh, baptized of John. The Spirit of the Lord came upon him. Now let's read Matthew 4 and verse 1. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. 
And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward and hungered. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he, Jesus, answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Huh. How come they don't teach this in churches? Oh, well, the, 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 the Bible doesn't start in Genesis. It starts in Matthew, right? The New Testament. Wrong. The Bible starts in Genesis, people. You got to lay that foundation before you put the walls up on a house and then put the roof up. They're skipping the foundation, these churches. Verse 5. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city. What city is that? Jerusalem. And setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple. And saith unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down. For it is written, Ah, oh, the devil's quoting scriptures here. He's misapplying them, but he's quoting. If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down. For it is written, He will give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands shall they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Oh yeah. Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Again the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain, and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world, and the glory of them. Well, I bet you these kingdoms of the world and the glory of them pale in comparison to heaven where Jesus came down from. Listen to this carefully. Verse 9. And saith unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Now, how in the world can Satan say, All these things will I give thee? unless he was given charge of the earth. Then saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. You see, Jesus didn't say, This world's not yours to offer to me. I guess evidently Satan was given a lease for a certain period of time, you know? Verse 11. Then the Lord leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. Oh, yeah. There you go. So evidently, Satan has a lease on this earth. Ah, uh, it's the best that I could figure out. So, are we going to study or are we going to be deceived? Uh, part three is going to be on Mystery Babylon. Oh boy, where is Mystery Babylon? Boy, I'll tell you what, I've heard so many different things. I've heard New York City, America, Mecca, Saudi Arabia. I've heard Istanbul, Turkey. I've heard Rome, Vatican, uh, what about Jerusalem? Let's face it, people. Satan wants worship. And what better way to have worship than to proclaim himself that he's the Messiah in the holy city, which is Jerusalem. What better way to do it? That's going to be part three. We covered briefly on the fall of Satan, briefly. I will go more into depth on part three. But uh, we're going to cover 
like I say, the fall of Satan and his wanting worship and kingship on this earth from Jerusalem. You know, he wants to rule from the holy city. That is his plan. He wants to counterfeit the things of the Lord. You see, there was a war in heaven, and he got cast out. He wanted to be the big cheese, the head honcho, the top dog, but that didn't work too well. Sorry, that position's already been filled. And he got cast down to the earth. And like he made a bet with God over Job, he's going to try to deceive us. But those of you that know your Bible well, that is not going to be an easy task for him. But being that there's a famine in the land of hearing the words of the Lord, Amos 3, verse 8, for most of the world, it's going to be an easy task. So, all right, everybody, this is uh, the end of part two. Study or be deceived. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in His name. Amen. You know, they're even arguing over uh, the name of Christ now. I mean, it's unbelievable. I mean, nobody ever argued over, over the name of Jesus 20 years ago. At least I never heard of it. Now they're all arguing, oh no, his name's not Jesus. It's Yeshua, whatever, Yahuwah. Uh, and what do you want to bet? That the name of the Antichrist will call himself Yeshua. You watch, people. You watch. All right. Part two, signing off. Bye.